And of course, 50,000 watts is good, but from Las Vegas, after it covers Las Vegas, it goes out to the desert and stops, right? You know, it, you can only go so far in the desert even with 50,000 watts. So, after about six months, I knew this is what I wanted, Eric, and uh, I went to my wife at the time and I told her that I was going to give up this really well-paying job and I was going to go and be on the radio. Well, she that kind of did in my marriage, Eric. She, she thought I was absolutely out of my mind. I mean, I had a high-paying job every benefit you could imagine, lots of security. I had built the, the cable company and I went to them and told them I was going to walk away, uh, begin working, well, not for peanuts, but peanuts for less. Uh, not, not, <laughs> not, it would be peanuts plus not much. Um, and she, she thought I was crazy. And ultimately, uh, you know, that cost me the marriage. Uh, but I went to work for KWN and Every minute I was there, Eric, I had my eye, you mentioned the nighttime, I had my eye on the nighttime because while 50,000 watts goes out and covers, you know, Las Vegas, which is great, uh, after that it's just cactus. But, aha, at night, even though slightly directional, KDWN covered 13 states at night. 13 states. So, I began, that would be regarded as a clear channel station, right? Uh, as close as you can get. There really aren't any exact clear channels left, but yes, uh huh, that's right. And um, every night at sunset, we would have to uh, throw a couple of switches and go directional. I think we were protect, protecting uh, WGN in Chicago. Uh, by the way, Eric, I, I can't tell you how many nights. I came within, I actually had my finger on the button. I, I, I worked at KWN, Eric, for a total of 10 years. I worked uh, late nights. I came to work at about 10 o'clock at night. Um, I would go on the air uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'd frequently be on the air until 6 o'clock in the morning doing talk radio. And again, in the beginning, it was absolutely uh, political. So I did that for a long time um, and really, really, really enjoyed myself and did very well uh, in the ratings. But I, just for the hams out there, I thought I'd tell you, Eric, there were about 10 or 15 times that I actually went over to the console put my finger on the switch that would turn us non-directional because I wanted to see if I could get calls from other parts of the country. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I came within just that much of turning that baby non-directional. I can't tell you how many times, but you know, I was in mortal fear of the federal communications commission and I'm, I was sure they would come marching in and chop my head off within minutes. So I never did do it. I'm kind of still sorry. I didn't frankly, um, so what happened, Eric, is here I am pretty successful doing this nighttime show, uh, being heard across the 13 states as advertised, getting a lot of calls. And one day I got bored with politics. I said, ah, not another night, not another five hours of politics. Oh, no. So I had a friend. Uh, you may have heard the name or know the name Lear, um, as in Learjet. Well, John Lear is the son of the man who put together and owned Learjet, John Lear. And John has some unusual ideas about virtually everything, including UFOs including um, Area 51 that I'm very close to uh, as I speak to you right now, uh, and the things that have gone on out there. So I thought, you know, I wonder what will happen. Now, now, bear in mind, the owners of KWN were conservatives. They ran that as a conservative radio station. Anything else was heresy. So 
I thought, well, just one night. Let me give it a try. And I, I had John Lear on. I thought, how interesting would it be to talk about Area 51, to talk about UFOs, to talk about all sorts of different things. So I had him on. And that was the beginning of the end, Eric. Um, I began getting so many calls uh, that, uh, well, we had an 800 line. Uh, back, that was back in the days when you had to have an 800 line. If you wanted out-of-state calls, that's how you got them. And I kept doing these kinds of topics. Uh, and about a month into it, Eric, of course, my boss was going totally berserk. Uh, not wanting me to do this, ordering me not to do this, threatening to fire me. And by the way, they did fire me, I think, three and perhaps four times. Problem was, Eric, the ratings were so good. I mean, during the day, the radio station had virtually no ratings. At night, when I was on, we were number one. Everybody loved it. Well, everybody except the owners. They hated it absolutely hated it. I mean, you can imagine uh, some very staunch conservatives uh, trying to answer to their friends how their radio station was talking about UFOs and things of that sort at night. It drove them crazy. About what year was this? Uh, this would have been probably the mid to, uh, let's see, by the time we were talking about this sort of thing, it would have been the mid-90s. Mid-90s. Uh, so I, I, was, I was taken in there and fired um, at least four times, Eric, and uh, then almost immediately rehired. I remember one day that uh, somebody came to me and said, uh, Art, we love your show. The, the Concord, the supersonic uh, Concord, is going to be in Las Vegas, and then making a trip to Paris, France, and guess what? We're going to get you and the lady friend of your choice on to the Concord uh, and go to Paris. And so I went to the lady who owns the show, uh, the station rather, and I said, look, I've got this chance to go to Paris for free on the Concord. Supersonic, one of the last flights, actually, Eric. Um, and I'm going to go. It means I'm going to miss a night, maybe two nights of radio. And she said, no. I said, okay, then. I quit. She said, you're fired. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I, I left. I went to Paris. I had a ball. I came back home and got immediately rehired. And, okay, so I spent a total of uh, 10 years at that radio station. Um, uh, two or three of them talking about UFOs and the paranormal and weird stuff, Eric. And it was so much fun. It was so different. And from that, I began to get uh, syndicated. You know, I began to suddenly show up in Phoenix. Um, I had a fellow who syndicated me. So I, then I was in L.A., then I was uh, in Seattle, then I was in Portland. Then I began going east, and before you know it, I think I was on about 530 radio stations, something like that. So radio has treated me very, very well, Eric. I would, I would say to anybody out there, a ham, anybody interested in radio, if this is what you're going to do... Then, uh, then good luck. I, you know, you mentioned the the late night thing. Um, I actually felt guilty after a while, Eric, because, you know, the fact that I was so successful um, at that time working for Premier Radio Networks Clear Channel uh, Corporation, that if I'm on 530 radio stations, I am taking jobs away from 530 people. And they're probably starter-type jobs. And so I actually felt guilty about that. But Right in the middle of the night. I, I think that's where I actually first heard you was um, I used to fly into cable systems that I operated in the Midwest in the 90s and um, would have to drive from, like, the St. Louis airport, you know, out into uh, Indiana or, or uh, Illinois. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you, and there, were, there you were. There you know, I, on the radio in the middle of the night. Yeah, there I was indeed. And um, so 
I guess people can look me up on QRZ, but I'm still at this time a very, very active ham. Uh, 